Now our section is going to have to get pushed down a little bit. So I'm just going to say top of, I don't know, 100 pixels and left of 10 pixels. And now we just have to style this guy or the actual navigation inside of it. So let's do that. So the first thing I need to do is get my unordered list to not have those ugly bullets. So I'll just say list style is none. Nav unordered list list items. We'll say float left. Margin, I don't know, zero pixels on the top and 24 pixels on each side. And nav unordered list list item hyperlinks. Maybe make them display block. Give them a little bit of a margin from the top and set their font size to 13 pixels. Let's see what happens. All right, so now we're looking at something that looks a little better. I'm going to add some padding. Three pixels, 10 pixels, four pixels, 10 pixels. Give it a gray color. And I'm gonna have, let's just see what that looks like. Okay, we're gonna have to get rid of that text decoration. And I also, just as a general rule, I'm going to say that my font family will be Arial Sans Serif. That looks a little better. So now we've got like a nicer looking thing up here. And I also want to make sure that my active navigation is a little more interesting. And I'm also going to have a hover thing as well. So let's do the hover first. So on when I say nav, unordered list, LIA, hover, in other words, when I'm hovering over the navigation, I want a background of 555, so that's going to be gray, and a color of white, FFF. And I'm going to say a Mozilla border radius of 12 pixels. So it'll look like a lozenge. And I'm also going to make this work for WebKit too. So I'll just say WebKit border radius of 12 pixels. Now when I hover over, these are starting to look like buttons, which is kind of neat. Again, there's absolutely no images here. I'm also going to add some border radius to the, to the top here so that it, it's smoother. So I'll take these two lines. And then for the actual nav, I'm going to add, so we don't want any border radius on the top or on the right, the top right, but we do on the bottom right and the bottom left. And save that. So now we've got this nice thing coming across. And I'm also going to maybe add a little bit of a gradient just to see what that'll look like. So we'll do that for the active navigation. So for nav, unordered list, li.activea, so the active list item, we're going to add a background of Mo's linear gradient of center bottom. Then we'll start with a gray at the bottom and then go up to a lighter gray at the top. Let's see what that looks like. Oof. I don't know about that. Well, let's see. If I make the background color white, well, that's a little better. And then I say that the Border radius is 12 pixels. That doesn't look too bad. And let's see if we can maybe, maybe it should be EE. -E. Let's see. If I make this 999, that's a little better. It's a little smoother. Maybe make this EEE. -E -E. 
There we go. That's a little nicer. So it's a little smoother. I'm also going to add a border. So a border width of... Actually, I'm not too sure about this border. Ah, let's forget the border. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. So here we go. We've got a nice little navigation at the top. And what's kind of cool about this is that we can even add opacity to all of this business, just like we did in the last video. So on my nav here, if I say opacity 0 0.7, that'll be 70% opaque. And then we get this neat effect where it's kind of floating in air. And we can see the video underneath, and it builds this really nice composite effect. Uh, again, you know, we can style our our paragraph section as well, so it'll have the same sort of effect, where I can set the opacity here to, I don't know, 80%, and if we make the section article P, the actual paragraphs, let's say they have 13 pixel font size, the line height is 20 pixels, margin bottom of 10 pixels, and I create a couple of paragraphs here, a couple of paragraphs of text. We have something that looks pretty decent. I'm sure if there was, in fact, we could even add some Laura Mipson text from the last video. Or two videos ago, rather. a lot of video or a lot of text rather obviously this wouldn't work you'd have to find another way of handling larger pieces of text you could make this scrolling or whatever and uh, you'll notice that you know if I scale this down or scale this up it's pretty flexible and it creates a really nice effect so that's what I wanted to show you about the video tag and it's pretty performant it works well and uh, it's another alternative to Flash Video. It doesn't work with Internet Explorer, and uh, if you're interested in doing real-time streaming or you want a content, if you want to protect your content or what have you, it's probably not the best solution. But uh, if you're trying to avoid Flash and you want an open format, it's a great alternative. So that's it for Flash. For sorry, that's it for the video tag. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is look at Canvas which is another feature of HTML5, and uh, lastly, uh, just sort of seeing what we can do with the, the Canvas tag. I'm John Lebensold, and thanks for listening.